Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about why pool and hot tub plumbing should remain separate. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so one of the questions that I get asked quite often is, you know, I've got a swimming pool pump, can I use it on my hot tub or can I add some jets to my, my swimming pool? So it's combining these, these two sort of different entities. And in this video, I kind of want to explain why you should really keep them separate. And, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a much clearer idea of why that should be. Now, before we get going, it's always a good opportunity to say, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that notification icon to be notified when my videos go live. I put two long form videos out every single week and a whole bunch of shorts as well. So there's loads of information about building hot tubs and plunge pools in your backyard. So please do subscribe, just gives me loads of motivation to continue to make these videos. Okay, so firstly, let's talk a little bit about the, the roles, the roles of the kit that's involved with a swimming pool versus a hot tub. So a swimming pool, we'll start with that one, a swimming pool kit, so notably the pump, is designed to move a large body of water slowly around the plumbing into the filter, into the heater, and then back into the pool. Now, conversely, a hot tub, the pump is designed to move a much smaller body of water, but a lot faster through the, the actual plumbing and the jets to create the bubbles, um, etc. You don't get that from a, a swimming pool return. So fundamentally, the, the two different entities, the pool and the hot tub, they have different roles for their plumbing. So that's, that's one of the first reasons, or, or certainly something that you should keep in the back of your mind when you're asking the question whether you can actually combine the two. Now, staying on the topic of pumps, a hot tub pump and a swimming pool pump is actually very different. Hot tub pumps in general are centrifugal pumps. So that means they have to be under the water line. They are not able to suck in air okay so they can only suck in water and they have to be supplied that water from the hot tub by gravity so you might hear of pumps being able to prime themselves you know hot tub pumps can't do this they need to have the water supplied to them they, they don't suck the air to draw in the water and it's slightly different from a swimming pool pump which if you have an above ground pump it will be a self priming pump and it does have the capabilities of actually sucking air to draw the water in to then remove the air from the system and have it nice and primed so that's when there's, there's no air in the lines at all so the actual roles and the types of pump that are involved are, are very different now i mentioned at the start of the video about large bodies of water being moved slowly with swimming pool pumps and conversely the opposite with with hot tubs and this comes down to the flow rates that are required so a flow rate for a hot tub is very different as we've already established than for a pool so what that means you can't just go and drop a equivalent swimming pool pump onto a hot tub and expect to get the same results. So what do I mean? Well, what I mean is just because a swimming pool pump is labeled as three horsepower doesn't necessarily mean it has the same flow rate as a three horsepower jet pump for a hot tub. And that's really important because every jet that's involved in a hot tub has its own flow rate requirements. So for example, the ones that I use in my builds are the waterway and they tend to be the, the Polystorm jets. They require 10 gallons per minute of flow to, to operate correctly. Now, if I don't have that from the pump, then the jets aren't gonna work correctly and I'm not gonna get the flow, I'm not gonna get the bubbles, I'm, I'm not gonna get that whole hot tub experience. So it's really important that the flow rates are correct for the equipment that you're putting together. Let's talk about the difference between swimming pool filters and hot tub filters. Now, hot tub filters, they tend to be the cartridge style. That you can you know, take the top off, take the cartridge out, give it a clean, put it back in or replace it as you need. So really simple to do. Now, swimming pools, conversely, they they are sand filters and sand filters are much bigger units 
uh, they send filters, they don't actually filter the same size of particles. So you tend to be able to filter with cartridge filter, smaller particles than you can with a sand filter. However, a sand filter will deal with a much larger body of water. So you're gonna struggle if you've got a very large swimming pool with a cartridge filter. It will just be too small and you won't get the filtration that you need. So the actual units are sized accordingly and they tend to be on the square footage of the uh, of the actual pool or the hot tub so you've got to make sure and you will do that you have the right size of filter medium in place for the body of water so you can't just switch them over so if you're you know, wanting to you know put a sand filter on a hot tub for example that you're building it's possible but you're going to have to have a separate filter and heating system on its own pump because the flow rates through a sand filter are not good enough. If you remember, we've just spoken about the jets requiring a flow rate in order to operate. If you have a sand filter in place, the chances are the maximum flow rate you're gonna get is around, it, around 80 gallons per minute. Now, if you think about, you've got a hot tub with 16 jets, 16 jets running the jets that I use in my builds, you're gonna need at least 160 gallons per minute. So if you're running that through the sand filter, it's not gonna work. And it's because, again, it's just difference in the way that the equipment is designed. A sand filter for a pool doesn't really want lots and lots of volume going through it quickly. It just wants the water to move through at a good pace to be able to be filtered. With the hot tub, you need to have the, that large amount of flow in order to power the jets. And inside of a hot tub filter, most of the filters actually have a bypass valve inside that opens up when you're on high speed. So you're not actually filtering the water and you're not restricting the flow. So again, these products are designed for uh, you know, specific use on the, the different types of either a pool or a hot tub. Heating, quite often I get asked, can I use my pool heater on my hot tub? Yes, you can. There's no issues whatsoever with using a gas, an electric or a propane pool heater on your hot tub. Again, just be mindful of the flow rates because quite often these heaters do have a maximum flow, but if you're putting a separate circulation, filtration and heating circuit in place in terms of the plumbing, then there's no issue whatsoever with using a air source that's designed for a pool, for example, or a propane heater, no problem whatsoever. So the heater is one of the pieces of kit that you can actually interchange between the two. Pipe sizes, just be mindful on the, the pipe sizes if you're you know, trying to combine or, or add a, a hot tub to your pool. Hot tubs, regardless of where they are, whether they're in Europe, whether they're in America, they're always on imperial pipe size. So what I mean is two inch, two and a half inch, one and a half inch, okay? There isn't a metric equivalent. Hot tubs will always be on imperial sized pipe. Swimming pools, if you're in the US, obviously you'll be on imperial sizes anyway. They tend to be on you know, two inches a minimum on the suction, one and a half inch returns is pretty standard. And over in Europe, you will be on metric sized pipe for your swimming pool. So 50 mil, 60, 65 mil pipe is very common in swimming pool builds. So just be mindful that you're gonna to have to convert those if you plan on you know, linking the two in, in any way whatsoever. So pipe size, really important. And just remember that your pool pipe may be different sizes to the hot tub. And finally, I'm gonna finish on two pieces of equipment that you can interchange between the two. Skimmers, the skimmers that I use in my DIY hot tub builds are exactly the same style as you will find in a swimming pool. They're labeled as swimming pool skimmers and they're perfectly fine to be used in hot tub builds. The other is pool return. So if I'm doing a separate heating and filtration circuit, then I need to put that hot water back into the pool somehow. And I use swimming pool returns to do that. You can't just have open pipes. You need to have a pressure differential across the heater, regardless of the uh, heating type. And that's just so that the heater can sense that there's flow going through it. So you need to have some kind of a return in the end of your pipe work. You can't just have an open pipe back into the pool. It's not good practice and it doesn't look great. And just a bonus addition for this particular video, overflows. So if you want to build an overflow into your 
existing pool. I will put a link at the bottom of this video for an article that I've written about that. There's lots and lots of things to consider. I don't wanna go into them on this video because I wanna keep this video just about the differences between pool and hot tub parts and why I think the plumbing should be kept separate. So if you are looking to add a hot tub to your existing pool and have an overflow, click the link below and you will get a really in-depth article from the blog about exactly what you need to consider when you're doing it. As always, I appreciate the view. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.